This week on the Retirement Quick Tips podcast, I'm bringing you segments of an interview I did with Jason Parker. We're talking about three numbers you must know to retire with confidence. Jason is a best selling author. He created the Retirement Calculator and he's the host of Sound Retirement Radio, which is a very popular podcast, has over a million downloads. I've included links to his podcast and other resources that we talk about in the interview in the show notes. So be sure to check those out. And without further ado, here is today's interview segment with Jason Parker. The other thing that I think is hard for people to sort of wrap their heads around, you and I do this all day long. So we could see how different things about retirement, different aspects of retirement might impact each other. So if you look at the one decision of social security, that Mm -hmm. one decision, if you take it earlier or later, what age do you take it? That has a ripple effect on a lot of other decisions that you make. And so it is really important, like you were saying, I think to crunch the numbers because your decision to take social security at retirement versus maybe waiting another year or two years or until 70, that one decision alone can have a huge impact. And that's not obviously the only decision you make in retirement. And so there's a lot of different levers that you can pull. And that's why it's so important to run the numbers because then you can say, well, what are you willing to do? Are you willing to live off of less because you really have to retire today and you really want to, or maybe you have a health reason that you need to retire today? Or, you know, are you willing to work a little bit longer so that you can live the lifestyle and have the income that you want in retirement? And it is hard to figure that out without running the numbers on it, like you were saying. Absolutely. And I love that you brought up social security because almost everybody in America is paid into social security. And so you want to get as much money back out of that program as you can. But I don't think people really understand all those implications. So social security is tax efficient income. It's inflation adjusted income. There are spousal benefits, there are survivor benefits, there's delayed retirement credits. You can start it at 60 if you're widowed, 62 if it's early retirement, 67 for most people for retirement age earn 8% delayed retirement credits up to age 70. I mean, those are things that people commonly, I would say commonly know about social security. But what I don't think a lot of people realize that it's tax efficient income. So you've got the provisional income rules that say in a worst case scenario, 85 cents of every dollar is taxable Mm Or And if you structure your income properly, maybe none of your social security is taxable. So it's a big range of taxation in terms of how your social security can be taxed. But the other thing that we found when it comes to Social Security is it really depends on what people's motivation are, what what their goals are for retirement. So if you come to me and you say, hey, Jason, I want to get the most money out of Social Security possible over two people's lifetimes. Okay, well, we can look at how do we structure Social Security to get the most money out of two people's lifetimes. If you come to me and you say, Jason, I want to die with the most money possible. So it's really important to me that we leave the biggest nest egg to our family. Well, that's a completely different equation. So if that's the goal, then maybe we don't want to try to get every dollar out of Social Security. If you come to me and you say, Jason, um, you know, the most important thing to me is how do we pay the least amount of money in taxes over our lifetime? Again, that's a different element of this planning process. Oh, the other thing is, is this is especially for people that are retiring early. You know, if you're retiring at, say, 60 or 62, A lot of people have to private pay for their health insurance leading up to age 65. And if you turn on Social Security early, that might impact whether or not you can qualify for the Affordable Care Act credits and pay less money for your health insurance in those early years. And I I know I'm preaching to the choir for you, Ashley, you know all of this stuff, but your listeners don't necessarily know that they could end up paying $2,000 a month for health insurance from 60 to 65 Or if they structure their income properly and they're taking money out of like a savings account that's already been taxed to supplement their cash flow, they don't start Social Security, they could pay a lot less money for their health insurance under the Affordable Care Act leading up to that. So there's so many different things that play into that one decision. Like you said, it's all interconnected and we have to know what the goals are and then we can help people understand what's the best option for them. And the other thing you have to think about is life expectancy when it comes to social security. Oh yeah, that's huge. (laughs) You have a history of longevity in your family. Everybody lives Mm -hmm. to a hundred. Well, then we need to plan for that. We just had a met with a gentleman recently. In this guy's case, he came in and he said, Jason, everybody in my family dies at 82. He said, the chances of me living beyond 82 are very slim. That's part of the analysis you want to do too, is you want to say, okay, if I live to life expectancy, how much money am I going to have? Or what's the best claiming strategy? Or 
if I live to age 100 and I live a long time, what's the best strategy? And you, ha you have to really think through all of these different moving parts to come up with the best strategy for you. It's tricky. And I think a lot of people, once you go down the rabbit hole of looking into it more and researching it more and trying to figure it out, then it becomes overwhelming too, because you don't want to make a mistake. And these are big potential mistakes that you could make. So yeah, we want to avoid that to the extent that that's possible. In terms of financial mistake, for some people, the decision on social security can be the difference between whether or not they've saved enough to live comfortably for the rest of their life, or if they're going to run out of money early. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it could be a couple of hundred thousand, a hundred thousand dollars or more of additional lifetime income, depending on the choices that you make. So mm -hmm. yeah, just a huge decision. Again, I think it's one of the reasons when people are getting ready to retire that they do start looking for some additional help because there are a lot of moving parts.